Can we make 5000 likes to this videos? If we make 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. No more games Trump just shut down teams with the truth and said the one thing that will finish Obamacare. President Trump is tired of playing games with Congress and the Hummer is finally coming down. After numerous efforts to expose the ridiculous details behind Obamacare, President Trump was forced to give members of Congress, and the public, a much-needed wake-up call. If Obamacare is hurting people, and it is, why shouldn't it hurt the insurance companies and why should Congress not be paying what public pays? President Trump is of course referring to the fact that insurers are required under the current system to provide subsidy payments, commonly known as CSRs, to low- and moderate-income individuals that participate in the state exchanges. To make consumers put more skin in the game, Obamacare in essence raises deductibles to amounts that are tough for most Americans to meet without financial support. CSRs were instituted to help insurers with the costs of the deductibles that patients can't otherwise meet. But President Trump has now staunchly threatened to cut off funding for Obamacare subsidy payments, echoing a statement he made Saturday as part of a continued effort to push Congress to repeal and replace Obamacare. President Trump promised lawmakers that if they failed to pass a bill to end the backwards health care program, he would quickly put an end to federal funding for Obamacare subsidies. Indoctrinated teams are clearly losing their minds over this decision, but it's about time our nation took serious strides towards cleaning up Obama's mess. President Trump has been consistently adamant regarding his goals for United States health care, and the first step is ditching what's been proven to be ineffective and downright hurtful to the citizens of this country. Are you proud of your president's decision to put the people first? Share this now so Trump sees our support and knows he's making the right choices for America. Sources, DailyCaller.com After J.K. Rowling said Trump attacked disabled boy, she got a nasty surprise from Melania. Liberals have walked all over themselves this week. They attacked Trump for supposedly snubbing a boy in a tiny wheelchair at the White House. He was seen reaching up to Trump as the president spoke with his mother and father, according to the Daily Signal. In reality, President Trump greeted the boy at the beginning of the event. It turns out that little Montgomery Monty Weir had been hanging outside the White House with Vice President Pence and First Lady Melania Trump. Rowling then went on Twitter and attacked Trump in a huge rant that has been going viral. Trump imitated a disabled reporter. Now he pretends not to see a child in a wheelchair, as though frightened he might catch his condition. J.K. Rowling, at J.K. underscore Rowling, July 28, 2017, my mother used a wheelchair. I witnessed people uncomfortable around her disability, but if they had a shred of decency they got over it. 1 slash, J.K. Rowling, at J.K. underscore Rowling, July 28, 2017, so, yes. That clip of Trump looking deliberately over a disabled child's head, ignoring his outstretched hand, has touched me on the raw. Slash 2, J.K. Rowling, at J.K. underscore Rowling, July 28, 2017, how stunning, and how horrible, that Trump cannot bring himself to shake the hand of a small boy who only wanted to touch the president. Slash 4x, J.K. Rowling, at J.K. underscore Rowling. July 28, 2017, here's all Melania said. She posted a beautiful picture below. Here is what really happened when he met little Monty Weir. J.K. Rowling writes about fiction regularly so it isn't surprising that she was writing about a fictional event here. The real villain that she should be writing about is Barack Obama. He's the one that created the horrible disaster that is Obamacare. Here is what the mother said exactly. Share this if you are tired of these celebrities attacking Donald Trump. They are sad, sad, sad. If you don't want to ever read another J.K. Rowling book, then comment go away, J.K. Rowling. IT's not over right after Trump thrashing, representative leaders did something incredible for health care. The full repeal and skinny repeal might have failed this week. But legislators are already back to work on a new health care plan. Republican Congressman Mark Meadows, RNC, told the Washington Examiner on Sunday, 
we continue to work on two different plans with our Senate colleagues. We will continue to do that over the next couple of weeks on a plan that can get to 51 inches, President Trump, frustrated after weeks of inaction, has urged Republican legislators to do just that, Rep. Meadows is a leader in the Freedom Caucus, and one of the key plays in the effort to repeal and replace Obamacare. The congressman assured the interviewer that there was still hope to repeal and replace Obamacare, I believe we deliver, still, on health care. To suggest that everything is over is not understanding the dynamics going on right now in the Senate. It's not over. Meadows said they still have time to get it right, and has been pushing Congress to work through their August recess, we can be disappointed with the results. At this point, this is one try on the Senate side. We probably have two more tries before we have to pack it up and go home. Honestly, this is great news, and it shows that President Trump is putting an extraordinary amount of pressure on legislators to pass something to bring relief to the American people, as he said on Saturday, so don't lose hope at all. Our representatives know that we the people want change, and they are going to work to get it the president will make sure of it. Share 50,000 times to get the message far and wide. H slash T The Washington Examiner God bless the one word Trump said as he honored this veteran made everyone in the room tear up. President Trump presented the Medal of Honor to 71-year-old Vietnam War veteran Army Medic SBC. James McLuhan. Watch the video at the end. McLuhan was recognized for his valor during the Battle of Huyong Hill in 1969 when he was 23 years old. McLuhan has been seriously injured but entered the kill zone to rescue 10 fellow soldiers. When McLuhan received his injury his captain said he could leave the battle to get treatment, but, McLuhan said, he knew me enough to know that I wasn't going. Not only was McLuhan able to rescue 10 other soldiers, but he also managed to use a grenade to take out an enemy RPG position. The White House said of McLuhan, he, voluntarily risked his life on nine separate occasions to rescue wounded and disoriented comrades. He suffered wounds from shrapnel and small arms fire on three separate occasions, but refused medical evacuation to stay with his unit, and continued to brave enemy fire to rescue, treat, and defend wounded Americans. McLuhan was also awarded the Combat Medical Badge, two Bronze Stars, the U.S. Army Valorous Unit Citation, the National Defense Medal, and two Purple Hearts. During the ceremony President Trump spoke about McLuhan's service and sacrifice, saying, Today 320 million grateful American hearts, Private McLuhan carries one immortal title, and that title is Hero. He continued We thank you for what you did for all of us. This speech is really touching, watch the short video I don't know who looks more proud, SBC. McLuhan or President Trump, let's get this hero the recognition he deserves. Share this far and wide comment God bless our troops so everyone can see how proud we are of our vets. H slash T Fox News Scaramus I fired look what got him canned seconds ago. Just days after Anthony Scaramucci let loose with a profane tirade against several members of President Trump's senior staff, the former White House communications director has officially been ousted. Scaramucci's tenure lasted a mere 10 days, and he lost his job on the same day that former Department of Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly was sworn in as President Trump's new chief of staff. The outspoken Scaramucci quickly clashed with then chief of staff Ryan Spribus ripping him to shreds in a vulgar interview published by The New Yorker last week. But it didn't come as too much of a surprise for Scaramucci, who according to CNN, had told Kelly he would leave his position to allow the new chief of staff to put his own team together. This is a strong sign of President Trump doing his darndest to build a productive administration for the future to come. If one piece doesn't fit, the whole puzzle can't be completed and draining the swamp has long been a complicated task. If you think President Trump is taking necessary action and you're proud of the team he's building, share this now so the world sees how our nation is growing. Sources, TheHill.com